Liar Satsuki is the best manga you're not reading. Or maybe you have read it and you clicked this video because you agree with me and you want to hear what I have to say. The point is that I love this manga. It's massively underrated and not enough people are talking about it. So what is it about? Minazuki Satsuki, our titular liar and protagonist, is a high school girl who is by all accounts normal. Except for the many ways she's not. Most notably, that she has a habit of randomly telling her classmates how they're going to die and causing all sorts of mischief around the school. Except, of course, she isn't lying, and it isn't her intention to cause trouble around her. You see, Satsuki has a superpower, or perhaps a curse, depending on how you look at it. She sees phenomena that gets labeled as premonition corpses that shows her exactly how someone will die. Well, not exactly. You see, all Satsuki sees is the corpse by itself. It doesn't actually explicitly tell her how the person is going to die. It's up to her to find out how and prevent it from happening. It's a very cool premise for the mystery genre that is typically filled with detective stories or medical mysteries. Of course, a cool premise isn't enough for me to recommend any piece of media. After all, we've seen plenty of manga, anime, movies, etc. that have had amazing premises that end up being wasted. Looking at you, Promise Neverland. No, it's the strength of the protagonist that really made me fall in love with this manga, and Chapter 1 does an amazing job of showing exactly the kind of character she is. It starts off with Satsuki warning her classmate, Komachi, that she's going to die that day, and what Satsuki thinks she should do to prevent it. This isn't a private conversation. Satsuki does this publicly and is completely unashamed. From this page alone, we could already tell a few things about our protagonist. For one, she's certainly not shy. And two, the reader already gets a sense for the kind of morals she upholds. She seemingly doesn't care about what other people might think, because a life is at stake, and that is what is important to her. The very next page reinforces these character traits, as it becomes clear to the reader that this isn't the first time she's done something like this. She already has a reputation as a liar, so much so that the school has given her the name Usotsuki, a play on her name Satsuki and the Japanese word for liar. We also get confirmation that Satsuki knows what people say about her, but she cares much more about the well-being of her classmates, though tact is certainly not her strong suit. So it looks like Satsuki is too honest for her own good, something the reader is probably thinking too. In fact, our protagonist acknowledges this about herself, but reveals in an internal monologue that she's actually a terrible liar, a trait that we will get to see more of as the series goes on. From what we've seen so far, we can already assume that Satsuki doesn't have friends. She's been doing this detective work all by herself, that is, until we are introduced to a teacher at the school, who is only referred to as Sensei, until his name is revealed later in chapter 43. Sensei becomes a recurring supporting character in the manga, and in the same vein as the protagonist, we are also able to get a pulse on the kind of character he is from the very first page he's introduced. For one thing, he seems to have a good relationship with the protagonist. Everyone else we have seen so far doesn't seem to want to have anything to do with her, but he is patient enough to listen to what she has to say. Though he does show shock at the ominous nature of her questions, he assumes the best of Satsuki and doesn't brush off her questions, even if they seem strange. Judging by his lab coat and his ability to answer her questions efficiently, the reader can deduce that he is the school's science teacher, and with the aforementioned traits, a great one to boot. After this, Satsuki goes to class and we learn that she experiences some level of bullying, which another classmate blames on her for being a liar. Through her internal monologue, we know that Satsuki is not lacking in insight, and she's perfectly aware that her actions come off as strange. It could all stop if she chose to stop warning people altogether, but what kind of person would that make her? Well, a normal person, for one. This is quite reminiscent of the scene from Captain America Civil War, when the audience is introduced to Spider-Man, the MCU, for the first time. Peter explains that since he has these superpowers, he must go out of his way to save people. Because if he doesn't, and something happens that he could have prevented, that makes it his fault. Now, this is far from a healthy way of thinking, but it does show the kind of characters Peter Parker and Satsuki are. 
the pieces of media these two characters are from, couldn't be more different. But the ideology they have about their powers and the responsibility they feel are exactly the same. So of course, when she sees the item capable of doing exactly what Sensei was explaining earlier, she immediately chases them down. But then Satsuki has to consider that if the chainsaw wheeling person is in fact a murderer, then she would be putting herself into danger instead. She doesn't have to wrestle with this for very long, as it is revealed that the person is just the school's art teacher doing chainsaw carvings, classic red herring in mysteries. Almost immediately after, Satsuki hears a loud noise and investigates, finding that a large sign hanging over the school has come loose and is about to fall. She deduces that this is likely what is responsible for her classmate's premonition corpse. Considering the time the premonition appeared, she knows exactly when the sign will fall. If she's going to stop this, she has to act right now. So she does. Satsuki jumps out the window, throwing her body into the falling sign to push it away from the window, where Komachi was about to stick her head out of. Through sheer luck, Satsuki survives by falling through a tree that breaks her fall. This action easily could have killed her. But instead of dwelling on that, all she could think about is how glad she is that her classmate is alive. That is the kind of character Satsuki is. A hero as determined as Spider-Man. But she doesn't have his powers. She's just a high school girl who values life above all else. This is what made me fall in love with this manga. The unwavering strength of the main character who cares so deeply about everyone else around her, even if that means that everyone will hate her. And there will certainly be more challenges for our hero to face as the chapter closes on an ominous note. It's the perfect first chapter to showcase the formula the manga will essentially adhere to for much of its run, and does an incredible job of showing off Satsuki's personality and morals. But did you hear that word I just used? Formula. That is a pitfall that any piece of media could fall into. If it becomes too formulaic, then you run the risk of the reader becoming bored. There's only so much one can do before the formula becomes too predictable for the audience to be convinced to stick around tell you that you have nothing to worry about in that regard. More than the formula, the characters, from the protagonist to the supporting cast we are later introduced to, are all incredibly fleshed out and are one of the biggest draws of the manga for me. Before I continue, if you haven't read the manga yet, I strongly encourage you to stop watching now and give it a read yourself. As terrible as that would be for this video's watch time, the remainder of this video will be discussing spoilers, and I would be remiss to spoil all the fun and intrigue for you. If you're still around because you've either already read the manga or you just want to know anyways, then thanks for sticking around and let's get back to it. So the best things about this manga are the ways it tweaks its formula as the series goes on, and it does this by introducing new characters, from supporting characters to antagonists. You see, Satsuki is quite a static character. Who she is at chapter 1 and who she is at chapter 80 are essentially the same. But a static character is not the same as a lack of character development. The best comparisons I can make are Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender and Superman in DC Comics. Their development comes from the challenging of their core ideals and how they justify sticking to them against all odds. In Satsuki's case, almost every other character in the series, whether they are a supporting character or the antagonist, is a foil to her. From the antagonist, we will get to later, this is expected. But the supporting characters, Satsuki's friends, also consistently challenge her ideals. Let's take her friend Akira Ato, for example, who very much does not start off as a friend. When we are first introduced to Akira, she immediately fits the delinquent archetype that we've all become so familiar with. Satsuki is tasked with bringing some school printouts to her, and when Akira's father opens the door, she sees his premonition corpse inside. Of course, Satsuki warns Akira the very next day, but then it is revealed that Akira is the one responsible for the premonition. She almost kills Satsuki herself, but doesn't go through with it, and the two end up talking about the situation. Akira's father is abusive, and without knowing where her mother is, Akira has little choice but to put up with this treatment daily, until she finally snapped and planned his murder. It is thanks to Satsuki that she doesn't go through with it, and the two become fast friends. Akira is the first person to understand Satsuki's powers, 
But because of that, is one of the characters who most often challenges her morals. This, of course, doesn't come from a place of maliciousness. They come to understand her situation, and it's simply hard for them to have to watch Satsuki struggle when almost every other person hates her when she's actively trying to save lives. Akira, Satsuki's best friend, whose own life was essentially saved by her as well, just wants to see Satsuki happy. But the reality is, and what they finally come to understand, is that despite how much pain she has to go through, letting someone die on her watch would be infinitely worse. Once again, I disagree with the notion that that would be her fault, but this is the kind of character Satsuki is that made me fall in love with this manga. The best thing this manga does to keep its formula interesting is introducing the antagonist and Satsuki's greatest foil, the student council president, Mikami Kai. He immediately comes off rather ominously, and essentially threatens Satsuki and Akira to straighten up. It is later revealed that he too has the same eyes as Satsuki, but his sense of morality is completely at odds with hers. Notice that I didn't say that their ideals are opposites. What Kai wants, or rather, what he says he wants, is fundamentally good. He doesn't want people to suffer, but the reality is that his actions speak for themselves. There's a stark difference between intention and action. What Kai says he wants is to remove evil from the world so that good people wouldn't have to suffer. What he's actually doing is killing people who don't fit into his worldview. Anyone he perceives as evil should die, and he doesn't see the irony of his own words as he also takes pleasure in his twisted justice, whether he admits it or not. Naturally, Satsuki rejects Kai, Standing tall and triumphantly, she makes a declaration and clear stance of her ideals once more. No matter what, she will try and try again. She won't stoop to Kai's level, who's taking the easy way out. Satsuki will do the hard thing and save everyone she can. This is why she's my favorite character. She's relentlessly brave and shows the strength of her resolve time and time again. But she's not invincible. And there's nothing that gets me more emotional than seeing a character putting on a brave face in a terrible situation. I can talk about this manga all day, but I think I'll let you enjoy the rest on your own. Liar Satsuki Can See Death is the best manga you're not reading. Why don't you change that right now? Thanks for watching.